Fencing and teaching fencing are not similar things. In fact, they are opposite things. I've come to this conclusion after many years of training to be a fighter and many years of training to be a teacher. It's my opinion, but it's a professional one, not a personal one. You're welcome to disagree, of course, but if you do, I would like to hear your reasons and your evidence. Who knows, you might persuade me to change my mind. Fencing and teaching fencing are closely related, but some people seem to think that they're the same thing, or at least that doing the second thing flows naturally and automatically from doing the first thing. They think that if you fence long enough and get good at it, then of course naturally you'll be able to teach it. This seems to be a very prevalent belief in many martial arts. But is it true? Or does that assumption reveal a lack of understanding of fighting or of teaching, or, or maybe of both? Let's start with elements that fencing and teaching fencing have in common. Now, you must have good foundational skills. You must be able to control your balance, line, focus, and distance. You must have good tactical skills. You must be able to put your point on the target, feel the steel, take your time, keep your distance, and continue the phrase. You must have good strategic skills. You must be able to do offensive outfighting, defensive outfighting, offensive infighting, and defensive infighting. And you must have an adequate and appropriate repertoire of technique to execute your foundational, tactical, and strategic skills. Well, hell, so far it sounds like fencing and teaching fencing are basically the same thing. But let's look a little closer. Does the fencing master use foundational skills to do the same thing the same way as the fencer? Does the fencing master use tactical skills to do the same thing in the same way as the fencer? Does the master use strategic skills to do the same thing in the same way as the fencer? I would submit that the answer to those three questions is no. Because the goal of the fencer and the goal of the teacher are completely different. They have very different intentions they have, in fact, opposite intentions. As a fencer, my goal is to touch my opponent without being touched by my opponent. To do that, I execute my own actions as perfectly as possible while manipulating my opponent into making mistakes. I create opportunities to touch, and I touch at every opportunity. As a fencing teacher, my goal is never to touch my student, but to be touched by my student. To do that, I intentionally execute my own fencing actions imperfectly, while manipulating my student into avoiding mistakes. I create opportunities for my student to touch me, and I allow them to touch me at every opportunity if they execute their skills correctly. Touching me is their reward for correct performance. In short, the fencer's job is to hit. The teacher's job is to get hit. If I do my job right, I'll get hit a lot, and my student will get hit never. The fencer is there exclusively for his own benefit, his own purpose, progress, growth, and glory, not his opponent's. The teacher is there exclusively for his student's benefit, for his student's purpose, progress, growth, and glory, and not his own. The fencer must be selfish. The teacher must be selfless. Form follows function. Because the function of the teacher is different from the function of the fencer, teaching requires a different skill set. Now, that skill set includes things that are adaptations of fencing technique, but it also includes things that are unique to teaching and never learned or used in the normal course of fencing. Things like how to structure a lesson, how to cultivate confidence, 
sensitization and desensitization, how to simulate different kinds of opponents, how and when to give feedback, and a whole lot more. Here's something else that fencing and teaching fencing seem to have in common. An excellent fencer sees his opponent as a unique, multidimensional individual existing in accordance with his true nature in the present moment. An excellent teacher also sees his student as a unique, multidimensional individual existing in accordance with his true nature in the present moment. But a fencer uses that understanding to defeat his opponent. A teacher uses that understanding to make his student undefeatable. Because each of my students is a unique individual, I don't really teach fencing. I teach fencers. Well, I do help my student to make necessary adaptations in his or her nature in order to master the sword. I also adapt the sword to suit my student's nature. One size does not fit all. Not everyone fights the same way. Not everybody fights like me. People are really good at some things, not so good at others. Now, you may always work on bringing up your weaker skills to a higher level, but to build your fight around the things that you do best. You want to have at least one move that you can hit anybody with anytime you want, like magic. Part of my job as a teacher is to help you find your magic. Because every student is a unique individual, I have to get to know them to be a good teacher for them. The better I know them, the better I can teach them. If they stay with me for a while, I'll get to know them better than their friends know them, better than their family knows them, better than they know themselves, at least at first. Part of my job is to help them discover who they are. I learn what they want, what they love, and what they fear. And I use that knowledge to help them become emotionally impregnable. I push their buttons until their buttons can no longer be pushed. I never fence with my students. Never, ever, ever. See, as a fighter, I pledge to give my opponent the best I've got, to do everything I can within the rules to defeat him. And I want my opponent to do the same thing for me. That's how we bring out the best in each other. So I never give less than 100%. I never go easy on anybody. That's an insult to them and presumptuous of me. If I cross blades with you, I make every effort to completely destroy you. No holds barred, no punches pulled. That means I'm going to attack you emotionally as well as physically. And if you're my student, well, that's not a fair fight. I know things about you that you don't know about me. I know these things because I've gained your trust over time. If I now use these things against you, how can you ever trust me again? Why would you ever trust me again? You shouldn't, unless you're a fucking idiot. Once you're my opponent, you can never again be my student. Why would I sacrifice that student-teacher relationship? For what? For me, that relationship is both intimate and fiduciary. The deeper the intimacy, the greater my fiduciary obligation. So, I never fence with my students. Now, I may give them a combat lesson, which looks like fencing if you don't know what you're looking at but it isn't fencing. I'm not fencing with them. I'm playing the part of a particular opponent. As always, I've, I'm giving them opportunities to recognize and respond to a particular tactical cue. And if they do it right, they hit me. The difference between a combat lesson and other kinds of lessons is that in a combat lesson, I don't tell them ahead of time what I'm going to do or what they should do in response. To them, it seems random and not planned, but it takes a lot of planning to seem random. 
Because being a good fighter and being a good teacher require contradictory ways of doing and thinking and being, I don't think it's possible to do both at the same time. I certainly can't. And I haven't personally known anyone who could. If I were going to you know, fence a big contest against somebody, I would take time off from teaching just to focus on that. It would still be tough. So you develop habits as a teacher that are great for teaching, but not very good for fighting, you know, like allowing your opponent to touch you. There's a fork in this road. You have to choose which fork to follow, and Emily Post ain't around to help you. You have to commit to one or the other. Otherwise, you may wind up being Baradon's ass. Look, think of it like this. There are swords that are made to cut, yeah? There are swords that are made to thrust. And there are swords made to do both things. But a sword that is made to cut and thrust does not thrust as well as a sword that is made just for thrusting, nor does it cut as well as a sword that is made just for cutting. You can choose to be a fighter, or you can choose to be a teacher. If you try to do both at the same time, you won't fight as well as you could fight as a fighter or teach as well as you could teach as a teacher. Now, if you're a half-ass fighter, you're only wasting your own time and you have a perfect right to do that. But if you're a half-ass teacher, you're wasting your students' time and you don't have a right to do that.